report, um, Dr. Smith. Good afternoon, Dr. Johnson, members of the board, Mr. Thurman. The Human Resources Report for the month of August 2014 provides you with a synopsis of new contracted employees. You will know that the total there is zero. Uh, the purpose for that is that the official start date for teachers is today. Therefore, the teachers that we hire for the FY15 school year will be included on the September 2014 report. Additionally, it shows new non-contracted employees, resignations and terminations for August 2014. I also provided you with information, I believe Ms. Francois is distributing that information at this time, that provides you with a detailed vacancy report as of this morning. Please note that we have a total of 119 instructional vacancies that we are working extremely hard to fill. Of those 119 vacancies, we have only 10 schools with more than three vacancies. So as you can see here, a number of schools are fully staffed. The ones with one to two vacancies, we are working strategically throughout the remainder of this week to get those positions filled. In addition to that, we have distributed to all of our principals a retired substitute list that is inclusive of retired substitutes who are ready and willing to serve until we have all instructional vacancies filled. Additionally, in your packet I provided, I believe that Mr. Orson or Mr. Coleman did request a resignation comparison for the district, and I did provide that as of the last page. Lastly, an employee handbook, which was distributed to all employees, uh, a copy, a hard copy for your record. So that concludes the Division of Human Resources report for August 2014. Is there any discussion, um, Mr. Dr. Irwin? Uh, just one quick question. What is the, um, if I'm looking at the Cedar Grove High School that the teachers needed, you have 2.5, and I just wonder what the 0.5 Yes, that point five. I don't have that documented list, but posted on our web, maybe like a part-time okay. uh, right. teacher. So point five is the part-time. Yes, sir. Mr. Campbell. Um, <laughs> no, not Mr. half Mr. Campbell, a teacher. <laughs> followed by Mr. Orson. No, not half of a person. No, sir. Dr. Smith, when yes, you look at the uh, detailed report, human resources report, I was looking through it just simple explanation. What does resign, not release actually mean? Yes, sir. Resign, not release are those individuals whom which signed their contract, uh, for which we have notified them that they have not been released from the district, however they elected to leave anyway. So that is the code that we have there, resigned but not released. Mr. Arson. Uh, Dr. Wordsmith, so I, just looking at this vacancy update, I just want to, I am a little concerned, I'm sure we all are, because with a vacancy of 119, when we look at the neighboring systems, it is substantially higher than the other systems. And um, just give us a little, you know, more detail about, I mean, obviously you're getting this information reported in from the other districts. You know, no one's really near where we are in terms of the vacancy rate, which has obviously been an ongoing concern. Clearly things, we have started to stabilize things in the system, but I'd like to sort of get your take on, uh, we obviously have to fill these positions hopefully by next week, but you know, what's our strategy going forward? Because quite honestly, I don't think any of us want to find ourselves, you know, at the bottom of the, of the pack in future years. Yes, sir, Mr. Orison. Uh, yes, that number is concerning. Uh, serving as the Human Resources Chief, it is my responsibility uh, to go out and find top talent for the district. What we have found uh, over the last three weeks, like last year, please note that included in this 119 are 100 positions that we added uh, to the budget this year. So that was $8 million. So included in this 119 are an additional 100 positions, uh, which we did not budget for in previous school years. As far as for the number of vacancies that we have, they go up and go down so fast. I am very confident that by Monday, uh, we will be at 99% staffed, if not higher. Uh, as I said, yes, sir, it is concerning. We do have another week. We are working strategically this week to authorize more than 200 individuals to be ready to go come day one. 
But as, as it relates to the vacancies, um, just from last Monday, and I did share this with Mr. Thurman, we had a number of individuals, once again, who did accept a, a, a contract of employment, but you know, salaries in other districts, I think I provided the Board of Education uh, with a, a, a list to show that as it relates to uh, neighboring districts who gave as much as 5%, you know, we have found a number of teachers at the last minute to do the same thing and, and to support their economic livelihoods. Oftentimes when they come in, we work with them, we, we request that they remain, but ultimately at the end of the day, they make the decision to leave and that was the question that Mr. Campbell had, resign, not released. You know, they resigned, but they were not officially released. Follow up on that, and I appreciate the addition of the 119 represents 100 additional. I, I would have to surmise, that at least in some of these other districts, their numbers also reflect additional teaching staffs. I mean, we're, it's it's a dynamic number for all. I, I think the larger issue, which you know we talked about briefly in the agenda setting, and, and what you raise here now is, I think a need at some point, maybe sooner than, rather than later, to have a real comprehensive salary review to begin to understand not just because we've been lagging because of our economic situation, but how our salary schedule compares competitively across experience and, and educational levels against other districts. Because I think in the conversation we've had before, we've had a perception that we've started out okay, and then as teachers gain greater experience, our salary schedule tends to trail off competitively against neighboring systems, even before you put in all the other factors. And so I guess really for both you and Mr. Thurman, I mean, it would be great to have some process in which we really can perhaps tackle this issue so that when we're here next year, you're not facing that as one of your obstacles among anything else. Thank you, Mr. Orson. A good point, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Thurman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Orson, I think you made an important point that was uh, first raised by uh, Dr. Ward Smith. The reality is that we have found ourselves because of ongoing budget issues uh, in a very uncompetitive position with many of our neighboring districts. And uh, it, it's an issue that uh, is number one in terms of priority for the administration this year as we began to think about, and I'm already thinking about FY16, uh, we have to address uh, compensation particularly for our veteran teachers. It's just a fact. and. And it, it's been really disappointing, but in terms of what has occurred over the last five to six years, we've fallen behind. And we are going to have to make, and we are catching up. Eliminating the furlough day was a big step. The 1% uh, COLA was a big step. But now we're going to have to take a more critical step in the next budget year and make the kind of investment so that we can compete. Uh, you may have noticed neighboring districts, uh, although we were provided 1%, other districts provided 3 and 5%. Now, the way they were able to do it was not because of current revenue, Dr. Bell, because they had a fund balance that they could draw upon. We did not have a fund balance. When you eviscerate your fund balance, it takes away much of the flexibility you might have fiscal. And a little bit later in this meeting, you're going to see how former superintendents and board members made decisions that today have come to roost here in DeKalb County. And they're roosting every day when some of our more veteran teachers do what any rational person would do, weighing all the circumstances, and then to make a decision to go and work somewhere else. And you all, myself and us, uh, hopefully within this fiscal year, we had an opportunity to make to move and take some steps in a different direction to restore competitiveness to the district. And I think this 119 speaks to that point. Human beings will often do what they perceive to be in their best interest and when it comes to just salaries, pure and simple. Now, whether that equates once you do the gas and the retirement and all those things, but we often don't look beneath the surface. We just look at the, the top line, Mr. Campbell. But the good news is, because of Dr. Bell's report, we'll be able to do something about it. And I hopefully, and I know you all agree with me, we need to make the commitment to our veteran teachers that whatever resources and educators that we have available next fiscal year, that we are going to make that as our number one priority to begin to turn this big ship around. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Thurman. I, I do agree that that should be our priority. Dr. Marley? 
Yes, I, I, most certainly uh, that has to be a priority when we're looking at uh, the field of education, looking at veteran teachers, looking at people who are committed to education. And Mr. Orson, I do understand the sentiments and looking at the numbers. But it, will there ever be a time where we could actually say in education because things are so uh, transient in education and teachers are going to do and go where they want to go that we can keep comparing ourselves to the other district? I still have to say when I look back to when we came on this board last year and look at the critical state that this district was in, I think that we've done quite well. I think that the administration, human resources, Dr. Bell and everyone has done a tremendous job in trying to pull this together. Our superintendent has done a great job, but I just, I sometimes I cringe when we're continuously trying to put ourselves with other people. They have not gone through a lot of what we're going through. And I like for us as we work hard to make sure our teachers get paid what they should be paid, uh, because it is a thankless job oftentimes and they deserve to be paid what they should be. We still have the counselors. There's a whole different ball game when you look at counselors who are paid at a different different level, more money was taken from them. So we have to look at that, but I think we're going to have to be careful that we don't keep comparing ourselves to everybody else. We're not in a race. We're basically trying to catch up with ourselves and to begin to ameliorate all those things that happened to us in the past. It's going to take some time. And so I'd like for us to be a little patient, but at the same time aggressively patient to get this done, but not all the time looking at what's going on with APS, because I don't want to be in APS. I'm where I want to be. I look at Gwinnett. I don't want to be in Gwinnett, even though I have, there's a vacant house I can move in out there. But the bottom line comes down to we've got to deal with what we need to deal with here. Let's look at what we need to deal with here. What can we do about this and put our heads together? But I think it puts a lot of pressure when we're continuously looking at what's going on elsewhere. Let's look at this 119. We know there are 100 uh, extra positions. What can we do in order to get those numbers down? But I don't think there'll ever be a day that we'll just say that there are no vacancies because if we say it on Monday, there's going to be a vacancy on Tuesday. And the thing about life, people die, people move. There are major life cycle changes that occur, and we've got to be cognizant of that and begin to respect those things that happen. Mr. Coleman. I have two quick questions. So um, one of the encouraging pieces of information here that I just want to make sure I understand is on the uh, schedule of separations. Uh, certainly it looks like we came down from a peak in 2014 to 2013. It's safe to assume those are the 2013 and 14 fiscal years. So that's apples to apples. Is that correct? Do you, do you have a sense for the reasons behind the decline in retirements and resignations? I mean, was it, you know, as you've talked to folks, or was it just part of this kind of variation year over part year? Part of the variation, yes, okay. sir. I, I don't have that. One um, question I'd have, especially for folks uh, in the community, is obviously there are always questions about how we'll handle vacancies that are still present on the first day of school. Could you just talk through, and I know we've got a broader update on this topic later tonight, but could you just take a couple of minutes to talk through the first couple of weeks? We know there will be vacancies somewhere, uh, as there always are. You know, how, how will you handle that? What can parents expect? I'm going to ask Dr. Thompson also to chime in with me. Please be advised that as provided on the second page of the report, you will see the vacancy by site. Um, we are appropriately staffed as we have a number of instructional um, individuals at each site to fill these positions. Uh, our game plan, as always, we will have extra hands on deck. Uh, as I have forwarded a retired substitute teacher list to the principals to ensure that we have a content certified individual with the pedagogy experience in place to assist on the first day. In addition to that, as I've stated, I am extremely confident as this number has already changed since I've sat in this meeting because they go up and down uh, very fast. But to the parents, um, being a parent of a student in this district, just as I want to have a highly qualified, highly certified teacher in front of my child, it is my goal to put one in front of everyone's child. So once again, we're working strategic, strategically with all certified staff in the building to ensure that there is a certified individual in the classroom to make sure that they have oversight for our children. In addition to that, on day seven, we are going to have a count, our official warm body count, and at that time we will see if there are any adjustments that need to be made within the district. So if there is shifting that must take place, we're going to make sure that some of the, the vacancies that we have will absorb some of that shifting based upon where the students show up. So for instance, if there is a need for two less teachers at one site, 
if that site has two vacancies, then we will begin the shifting process and allow the receiving site uh, to hire certified teachers for that time. So once again, I feel confident that we're in a good place. No, we're not 100%, but we will get it done. Can I ask one quick follow-up? So the student shifting um, component of that is very interesting, actually. D how big are those variations typically? I know we don't know going in exactly who's going to show up where, uh, and that changes. How big are those movements uh, as we've seen in the Minimal. Past? We try, well, not student shifting. We're talking about staff staff shifting. Yes, sir. We don't, we don't shift students. We, sti we shift staff. And I do apologize if I did not clarify that. But essentially, once our warm body counts are taken, uh, the first five days and officially looking at the seventh day uh, of the school year to ensure that we have appropriate staff in place, we will have more information at that time. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. You finished? Okay, thank you. Um, no further questions. Is there any uh, opposition to placing this item on the consent agenda? This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Uh, 